Greetings, friend. Do you ever feel that you scan through a Sudoku puzzle and don't know what you're looking for? Well, the best way to reduce your solve time is to improve your scanning skills. I will show you how to solve this puzzle for the 2023 Sudoku Grand Prix by sharing some of my best scanning tips. There are at least two spots in this puzzle that will slow you down without knowing these Sudoku tricks. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, first tip. Look at these ones. You got this one coming down, column one cutting across the row. There's only two possibilities for one. I'm going to mark that. It's called Snyder Notation. Anytime a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a can. Mark it in case you solve one cell, you can solve the other right away. What it also does is since these ones are limited in block seven to the same column, ones cannot be anywhere else along the column. And by seeing that, we can look up here with this one and solve for one right here. It's the only place left in column two for there to be a one. And then a nice little scan trip is, notice right here you got this one, three, eight, nine. So that's four different digits. And then you have this seven, six, and two. That's three others. So you have seven digits looking into these two cells. And whenever you have that, that means these are limited to the same two canons. It's limited to a four and a five. But if you scan down the column and see this five, you know you can solve that for four and solve that for a five. Those are all actually hidden singles. Or excuse me, that was a naked single, another naked single that we found just by scanning. After doing that, let's look at where the eight can be along here. Once you fill in cells, just keep going along the row or column where you're at. Since eight can't be here because of that eight, can't be here because of this eight, we know we can solve this cell now for an eight. All right, and now we can do some things with the twos. Like I'm looking here and go, oh, okay, I see a two. I can scan and immediately see this other two. And now the two is limited to this one spot here in block six. And if I come across, and remember, there's only a two and a four remaining here. And solve for four right there. And solve for the two right there. And just like that, now we're solving all of these cells. And then I can kind of follow these fours around a little bit. And what you'll notice is you got this four here and this four here. Only place for four and block three is right there. And then after doing that four, let's look kind of at the fives. You know, you got a five here, you got a five here. You got these two fives. Whenever you have four of a candidate looking into a block, you know there's only one possibility remaining and you can solve for it right away. And this is going to help us out with these other fives. So we got two fives here and solve for a five. So I know there's a lot of fives already given in the puzzle. These two fives and these two fives, I can solve for a five here and finish out the fives. Looking good. Now let's look at the sixes. You got these two sixes and this six. I can solve for a six here. So I'm just kind of picking up where I left off here in block nine. And then, you know, where else can I look for a six? And this would be a spot where you're like, where else do I go? All right, because the scanning is not going to necessarily work that well. But then if I switch over here and look in this row and go, okay, I have a one, two, three, four, five, and an eight. All I need is a six, seven, and nine. So I look across the row real quick. Then look up the column and see a seven and nine, two of the three missing digits, or look at this cell. This has to be a naked single six, which is going to allow me to finish the rest of the solve because the seven's right here. That's got to be a nine, and that's got to be your seven. And if you want to solve naked hidden singles like this even better, then check out the pin comment below. Download my free Sudoku solving guide, and you will solve Sudoku even quicker. And you find some value in that solving guide, please consider buying me a coffee and invest in the future of this channel. I'd really appreciate it. Let's switch over to the eights now. You know, you got these two eights and this eight, we can solve for an eight up here. And with these two eights and this eight, we can solve for an eight here. And with those two eights, you can solve for an eight there. And then our last spot for an eight, these two eights and this eight, and we've knocked out all of the eights. Now this next, Thing to find is probably the trickiest, and this is where I'm going to give you a nice tip to solve scanning. Whenever you're looking and the cross hatching is not really working really well, look where you have a good concentration of digits given. And so, if you look right here in block eight, you have five givens, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then you have a couple extras the one and the two looking across the row, all in looking to this cell right here. And I'll highlight the cell. 
And so all we need is to figure out, is this going to be a three or a four? So we looked and found five of the givens here in the block. Two more in the row. And if you look up the column, you'll see there's a three. So we know this cell has to be a naked single four. And so I cover how to find all these different combinations of hidden and naked singles in my single cell solving guide. So check out that video here and subscribe to some more hobbies if you want to improve your scanning. All right, let's remove that color and let's see what else we can do with the four. So you got this, this four here, these four, and these two fours we can solve for four right here in block two. Great. And then we also with these two fours and these two fours, we can solve for four right here. Now let's do some more scanning again. Let's look here again in block eight and in column four. We've solved three extra cells here, a five, six, and an eight. We have a four, seven, nine. So we're looking for a one, two, and a three. But you notice that this could be a one or a two because of the three right there. This could be a one or two because of the three right there. So this could be a one, two, or three. Since we know the three can't be in either of those two cells, we can solve for the three right there. And that's the kind of things you need to see if you want to improve your scanning and go quickly from naked to hidden singles. So after solving that three, now with this two cutting across, we can solve for the two right here and the one right there. And once this one cuts across and displaces the Snyder, as I call it, we know we can solve this cell for a one. And then this creates a full house where eight of the canets are filled in. So we've got eight digits there. The only thing remaining is a three. And then if you look up here, where can a seven go in column one? Because this seven can't be there. This has to be your seven. And now we just have a two and a six remaining in block one. And you want to now focus on even greater restrictions where you have one and two cells remaining. Because of this six, that's got to be a six. That's got to be your two. And then with this two, that's got to be a two right here, which gives us the full house to solve for three right there. Awesome. And then... You know, I see my two sevens means this has to be the seven and that's going to be the nine. Another full house. You can solve for the three right there. Looking good. Got another full house here. We can solve for the nine. You see how we just keep on creating more restrictions. And then I'm going to scan over and go, okay, I got nine here, nine there. This has to be a nine. And then this is going to be your seven. And then with these two sevens, this has to be a seven. And the only thing remaining in block nine is a three. Awesome. And now we're going to go over here and go, what else do we need? It looks like we need a three and a nine. I don't have that yet, but what do I have right here? It looks like we need a six and seven. Okay, there's my seven. That's a seven. That's a six. I'm not going to mark this in because I know if I solve this and we'll create more restrictions, I can keep working that avenue. And then I don't actually have to make any marks. All right, and then once I see a six, I'm going to immediately look over here and see where else I can put a six. Six, six with this number means that has to be your six, which now fills out the block by putting the two right there. And then I'll scan again. Two, two, here's your two. Boom, knock out the two. I look in here and see a full house, knowing this is a three. And with this three, that's a three, that's a nine. Hopefully you're kind of seeing the rhythm here. And now nine, nine means this has to be a nine. I didn't have to scan all of these digits. I just knew because of these two nines, the only place left was right there. So now I do a quick scan, go, I'm missing a one. Awesome. I don't see a one up here. That's got to be a one. And your last digit is a nine. Want some more scanning tips? Then check out this video. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching.